Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we've got a debut on the channel um, by a constructor of the name Totally Normal Cat. <laughs> yep, that's apparently uh, what he or she likes to be known as. Um, and this puzzle, I mean, it looks fascinating. I read the rules just before I clicked start on the video. And um, yeah, it, it, I think this one is going to be very interesting, although it does use disjoint sets, which are not necessarily my forte. We shall see. Now, first thing I want to mention today is I want to say a very happy 12th birthday to Audrey Smith. Uh, Audrey is in the sixth grade um, and she has achieved some incredible exam results over the last uh, few months. So she... Um, uh, she achieved an honour roll basically with straight A grades. Her lowest grade apparently was 92% for the semester and she's been invited in the US to join the Junior National Honour Society and that is absolutely outstanding and Audrey watches Cracking the Cryptic which is even more outstanding. I love hearing about these kids who are um, obsessed with Sudoku so Audrey fantastic um, and uh, happy birthday. I really hope you've had a great day. Um, what else do I want to mention? Well, um, I finished editing Tan Tan Dai's uh, video, our interview with Tan Tan that we did earlier this week. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, I hope that will go out there, will come out tomorrow morning UK time. So 10 o'clock tomorrow, uh, look out for that and you'll get to see a video showing Tan Tan speed solving three puzzles and prepare to have your jaws dropped. Absolutely incredible. Um, and oh, we've got a few things coming up on Patreon as well, of course. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Um, so we've got, I think, three things in the offering. It's absolutely crazy. Mark's done his cryptic crossword, um, the Times Monthly special. Tomorrow we release Scott Strosal's um, uh, Sudoku Challenge. Um, so look out for that. And also tomorrow, if I remember, I will put um, an extra video from Tan Tan where Tan Tan talks through how to solve a particular type of Sudoku variant. So lots of bonus stuff over on Patreon at the moment. And I hope lots of you are doing this Sudoku marathon as well this afternoon over on Logic Masters Germany. I look forward to hearing uh, how that goes. I believe, in fact, that Tan Tan may be competing in that. So if she is, that will be interesting indeed. Now, let's get on to Totally Normal Cat's Puzzle. Uh, I haven't got a clue, by the way, how difficult this one is. Apparently it has appeared on Logic Masters Germany, but it hasn't had enough solves to, um, uh, to be graded. Um, but one of our testers has told me that this puzzle is exceptionally good and I need to try it. So I'm going to do just that. So normal Sudoku rules apply. Clues outside the grid give the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal, so standard little killer clues. Digits may repeat along the diagonal, so again standard little killer clues, so that's telling us those six cells add 26 and we can repeat digits. So, you know, if that's a 9, it would be fine for that to be a 9. Ah, in theory, that's not a very good example because, of course, that's going to break the disjoint set. 9 there would be absolutely fine. Um, so what else? We've got grey lines are palindromes. We've got these sort of waves in the grid, ripples I'll call them. Um, now the ripples need to read the same backwards and forwards. So, well, okay, each ripple it looks like is three cells long. So basically what that's saying is those two squares have to contain the same digit in each case. So this would be a valid arrangement of a grey line and it's therefore, and it's palindromic because if we read it this way, one, five, one, it reads the same as if we read it from the other direction, one, five, one. Perfect. So that's that. Um, now here's the disjoint sets rule. So no two cells in the same position of their box can contain the same digit, e.g. row one, column one, and row four, column four. So you can see that these two cells are both in the top left-hand corner of their box of the Sudoku. And therefore these digits must be different. So one way to look at this is that this set of digits here, i.e. all of the top left corners of the boxes of the Sudoku, have to contain the digits one to nine. All the middle cells of the Sudoku have to contain all of the digits one to nine, etc. So basically hidden within this puzzle is lots of different, you know, weird sets of ones to nines and these are incredibly hard to scan if you are me so wish me luck do have a go at this yourselves the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual now i get to play let's get cracking and 
Right, so, well, hmm. 50 actually I don't think is a very interesting total in these puzzles because, you know, in theory the maximum along here, even with the disjoint set rule, would be 72 if I make each of these 7, 8 and 9, and the minimum would be 1s, 2s and 3s, which would be 18, so this is a very average total. Uh, Right. Okay. I've got. I mean, I've got nothing here. I'm. I'm guessing we have to look at these three clues um, because I've seen this sort of thing before. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to have a look at these and see if that tells us some magic. Let's highlight them and stare. That's 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 my tip. Stare at the Sudoku until it gives way. Um, what do these add up to? So these add up to 110. So the way I've seen this work before is that you try and, oh yeah, okay, now this actually is immediately interesting. This is immediately interesting. Ah, the palindromes, I see. Right, so what I was about to say before I was so um, rudely interrupted by the ripples in the grid is that what, what you typically try and do when you sort of see these triple diagonals like this is to map the purple squares onto these three boxes of the Sudoku. Now, why do we do that? Well, it's because we know what the total of these three boxes is, because obviously a complete box of a Sudoku contains all of the digits from one to nine. And if you add those digits up, you get 45. So I know that those cells sum up to three lots of 45, which is 135. Now, I also know, of course, that the purples themselves add up to 110 and normally it's really difficult because you've got to pick at these innies and outies from the boxes and work out how they reflect but here it's really rather beautiful because this little cell whatever goes in this purple square appears in this box there via the palindrome and whatever goes in that square appears in this box via the palindrome so these two purple squares actually complete box five of the sudoku and this one contributes to the gaps in box nine. So what we're left with, maybe I'll just shade those in so I can remove the cursor, but what we're left with is, this is 110. So the cells highlighted, including the orange ones, add up and not including these ones, well, yeah, ignore these ones because they've been reflected into their box. So we can get rid of the colouring. So we know that these squares, all of the shaded squares now, add up to 110, but we've got to get to 135. So to get to 135, we need to add in this digit, this digit, and this digit, and remove this one. So this one needs to come out, and these... which means that, ah, this is, this is forced. Okay, this is forced because the difference between 135 and 110 is 25, which means that basically 25 plus this square has to equal these three squares. Well, what's the maximum I could put into the greens, the absolute maximum? Well, if I put eight and nine in those ones, and I put a nine down here, that adds up to 26. Which, which is only just possible if I use one here. So if I use anything bigger than one here, if I used two, I would have to make these squares add up to 27, um, which isn't going to work but because I will need three nines and I can't double the nines up in box one. So this is one, this is eight nine, this is nine. The nine, the nine uses the disjoint set. Now look, because this square, is in the same position as this square in its box. So that's an eight, that's a nine. This diagonal is a, needs a three to make 20. And, well, that's still a good start. Even if it, even if it breaks now, at least we've, we've got digits in. I've got digits in under 10 minutes, which is a rarity nowadays. Um, 
Well, if these two squares have got to add up to 10 to make the 19 clue work. Can we do anything else? The 26? No, that's... Ah, okay, so maybe I've... <laughs> Uh, I've done some stuff and now I've got stuck. Nine's in that box. No, nine can't go there, look, because it will reflect up into that position. So nine's in one of three places in box three. So what do we do now? Um, none of the little kid killer clues do anything, do they? Uh, sorry, I'm so sorry about this. I am absolutely nonplussed. What, what is it I'm missing here? I have no clue. I mean, the 50 diagonal, I can see that these three squares now um, in fact, maybe I'll get rid of the colours, actually. Maybe that's a sensible idea. Um, these three squares on this diagonal now can't be eights and nines because of the eight and the nine in the lower left-hand corner of these two cells. But, okay, you can't put nine here. Ah, in this box you can't actually put 9 anywhere, I don't think. You can't put 9 here because of the 9 there. You can't put 9 here because it would get reflected via the ripple to there. And you can't put 9 here because the 9 would appear here on the ripple and that's in the bottom left hand corner of that one's box. So 9 can't go in any of those squares. So this would be 8, 7, 6 as a minimum, which is 21. Still getting very close to 50 fairly quickly. That one can't be 9 or 8, so this has a maximum of 7. That one can be anything. In fact, that one, I think, yeah, that one can be 9 again. That one... Uh, that one sees, oh, that one sees eight and nine as well. Oh, 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 that's really rather clever if that's what we're meant to do. Ah, sorry. Yeah, okay. Now let's actually, let's keep looking at this diagonal because I just noticed something rather, well, actually, I will really rather beautiful. So, if I highlight, hang on a sec, one, two, three, uh, yeah, that is, that is so clever, that is so clever. So, if we highlight every single cell in the Sudoku that's in the bottom left hand corner of, it, of its box, we get those squares. Now look again at this diagonal, because this square is definitely in the bottom left hand corner of its box. This square is a different bottom left hand corner of a box because it reflects via the palindrome to this one. This one reflects via the palindrome to this one, which is another different digit. This one is obviously um, in, it's just in the bottom left hand corner of its box so we know it must be different to those three squares and these two squares as well. This one is not in the bottom left hand corner of its box but it is once it reflects there. So, and that one is in the bottom left hand corner of its box. So I think that the ripples are telling us that lots of these digits have to be different because they end up in the bottom left hand corner of their box by hook or by crook. So this certainly has to be different from this, different from this, different from this. That one. That one I think is free. 
So these four have to be different from each other and different from eight and nine. Then this one has to be different from all of this set and different from eight and nine. And this one is the same because that's just in the bottom left hand corner of its box. So six sets are believable. Six cells on this diagonal are different digits and not eight and nine. So the maximum value we can put into those squares is 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 and 2, which add up to 27. Uh, by the way, the way I do that is just I know the triangular numbers off by hand and I just deducted 1 from the triangle, triangular number for 7. Um, so it's, no, it's, no, it's nothing quick by way of mental arithmetic. Um, Okay, well that's lovely because that means these six cells have to add to, a, well, they're a maximum of 27, which means these three squares are a minimum of 23 to get us to 50. And that means, no, you rotter, ah, bobbins. I was about to say that means that's a nine because look you can't put we know we've already looked at whether nines can go in here and they can't go in there and normally with 23 and three digits you need a nine but look ah you could do double eight seven what's wrong with double eight seven here ah oh. Two eights and a seven get to 23. So if we put the eight there, we put the eight there, we put the seven there. Oh. I've got a horrible feeling I'm missing something really obvious here. I mean, this, this feels very beautiful to me. It feels like I'm right on the cusp of proving this diagonal is constrained. What's wrong with two eights and a seven? I don't think there is anything wrong with it. That's so strange. Um, So these squares have to be different. Oh, good grief. Yes, I've got it. I've got it. That is absolutely, you call yourself totally normal cat. I'm gonna call you totally vicious tiger. That is really, that is very, very hard, but I'm, I think it's very cool because these squares on the diagonal we know we actually know which bottom left hand squares they they equate to they equate to these three are obviously just in the bottom left hand corner of their box this one equates to that this one equates to that this one equates to that so that the only digit that we've not catered for in the bottom left hand corner of its box is this one now my maths when I when I added up these to get myself to 27 was because I went 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 I didn't include 1 because I just assumed 1 could go in the other square well the other square is there which at the first blush looks like it can be a 1 except via the ripple it ends up there which is in the same position as that one. That is bonkers. So that means, I think, if this can't be a one, one has to be on the diagonal. And that means the maximum I can make these six cells add up to now would be if I swap the two out. So I go seven, so I get to 26 instead, which means that these three squares now have a minimum 
I have to get to at least 24 and that deals with it. I now can't use 887, that's not enough. I need, I need 24 and I can't use 3 eighths, that won't work. So there must be a nine in one of the three cells and you can't put a nine in those two. Ergo, that is a nine and that is one hard earned nine. Um, and these two squares have to, oh, these two squares have to add up to 15. So this must be a seven eight pair because in effect, these two squares are in the top row of the grid because of the palindrome. So this, this is a seven eight pair. Which means that's a seven or an eight via the palindrome. And I'm sure that this is very, very important. Ah, the other thing we get from this, of course, is that this square has to be a two because we now know that the only way this diagonal can work is if these cells on the diagonal are exactly made up of those digits. Um, and that's some fairly impressive pencil marking. Um, but that does mean this is a two. That's a two, therefore, via the palindrome. The 19 diagonal is now done. Nine plus two, I need this to be an eight. Oh, this is cool, isn't it? This eight now sees this square, so this gets disambiguated. And we end up, now we end up actually, look, we can get rid of sevens on some of those positions. And this is on a palindrome, so we can, we can feed this through here. Uh, that one can't be a one, so that one can't be a one. This one can't be a one. So this one is three, four, five, six, seven. This one, uh, I think that one can be lots of things by the looks of it. This one also seems to be able, oh, sorry, I think this one just is what it can be. It can be all sorts of things as well. Oh, well, never mind. That's still, that's still an awful lot better than we were doing. Now seven, look, by Sudoku is in one of those two cells. Two is in one of those two cells. No, no. Use this one, don't know what it means anymore. Ah, that comes through via the palindrome. So this one is one, see, need different pencil marks. Need those ones. It's so easy to miss these. Every time I put one one of these cells in, I sort of look to see whether I've got you know patterns like this. But I'm sure I'm missing them right, left, and centre. So I've got I've now got something on every palindrome. Oh. Oh, hang on, look, this diagonal's now. This diagonal's very interesting. I've got 20 on it, and I've got lots of cells left. I've got lots of cells left that have to add up to 13. Six cells have to add up to 13. These are the sorts of averages we like to work with, because that means these cells are low. And, and they're only part of they're only part of three. Well, I can only use two, two distinct sets to create these digits because whatever I put in there, I then can't put there or there. So these, these three cells all have to be different digits. And in fact, I'm going to highlight them. Those three squares have to be different digits. And these three squares all have to be different digits because they are in they are in their disjoint set with each other, the bottom right of their boxes, the greens are the top left. And we've got to make them add up to 13. Now this is, this is just stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. So we don't know which way round they go, but this must be a set of one, two, and three, which add to six. And then the other set will have to be one, two, and four to add to seven. So six plus seven is 13. Now we don't know, the thing is we don't know, oh, we know there's no seven in either of those. That's not seven. 
that's so this is seven we get a digit um it's probably handy but I don't quite know how let's just think harder about the greens and the reds though because one of these sets is one is one two and three and one of the sets is one two and four Oh, okay, so both sets, yeah, here you go, here you go, both sets have a two in them, but the red two can't be there or there, so that's a two, that must be the two in the red set, and now probably the green set's going to be, yes, now, now the green set, whether it's one, two, or three, or one, two, and four, it needs to have a two in it, that can't be two, that can't be two, so that's two. So one of these two cells is a two. This two look is fixing a two up there by Sudoku. One of these two squares is a two. Um, oh well, let's label up these other cells because they've got to be either one and three or one and four. No, this one doesn't really... I don't think this one sees any of those cells. Eight has to be in one of those two cells by Sudoku. This three means that's not a three. So... Oh, I was about to say, and I don't think that thing is, I don't think that means that this this set could still be a one, two, three set, if that's the one and that's the three, and this would be the one and the four. So that's bobbins worthy, I'm afraid. Um, so, wow, 27 minutes. I've actually, I really feel I've done okay to this point. I'm nearly half an hour in. Um, I don't really know what to do here. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I've looked at these diagonals and I can't see them working. I can see I've got lots of digits in those squares. In fact, that might be sensible. Yeah, at least I can limit these. Right, yeah, let's look at that. The top right hand set of ones to nines, you can see I've got one, two, seven, eight, nine in it. So these yellow squares, that are the ones I haven't got digits in, have to be three, four, five, or six. And in fact, I can take out seven, therefore, from these two, which I'm very happy to do. So that's not seven anymore. That's not seven anymore. Well, that's a bit sus, actually. That's a bit sus. Uh, sorry, I'm getting. I think I'm getting waylaid here. I'm just look. I was actually looking at the purple group. I, I want to go back to looking at this group. Let's go back to looking at this group. So I need to get rid of one from that square. That can't be a one. And the other square was this square, which has to be three, four, five, or six. So now in the top right of each box, I've got the right set of digits left. Now, the, sorry, the other thing I was looking at was when I took the sevens out of those squares, I took the sevens out of these purples. And seven has become very restricted. Oh, good, this seven is taking a seven out of that cell, which means this square can't be a seven. And actually now, where do you put the seven in the purple set? The ripples have have rippled, and that square is the only one that can be a seven. And I take that 
with delight. So now we get seven here. This is really, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful, but it's brutally hard. That So let me just think about what I've just done, partly because I am a great believer in trying to understand sort of how setters' minds work, because sometimes it can lead you to understand how, you know, where you should look next in the puzzle. So I looked at these, noticing that I had lots of digits in the top right. That got me this three, four, five, six trip quadruple. They fed through the palindromes and limited the bottom left hand sets. And they gave me a seven here. And that seven is doing what to the world? Does anybody know? I'm sure somebody's watching this video with complete clarity being telling me exactly where I need to look, but unfortunately I mean, well what I'm trying to work out is, is it another disjoint set? But if you look at the left hand side of boxes in general, you can see I've got very few digits placed. I've got a little bit of a restriction on those three. Let's check the top left, top left of boxes. Oh, okay. Well, there's... <sighs> yes, I've got... I've, well, I've got something. I've got something. Look at the top left. Look at the seven and the eight we've got in column one and row one of the grid and ask where seven and eight can go in the yellow squares I've just highlighted because it's not very many places. I think it's only two places. These two cells are the only only positions in the top left of boxes that can be seven and eight. So that is a seven, eight pair in that disjoint set. And that is... Hang on, I'm gonna highlight that again, just so I can look at it for a bit longer and admire it and think about it. So I've got a seven, eight pair What is that doing? I mean, it would be if it was on this diagonal and I had a little killer clue or something, that would make complete sense. What has that done to the puzzle? How has that changed? any logic I've looked at so far. Or has it has it just not changed it? I, I really I don't think I'm understanding this. <sighs> Got the, we've got a seven eight pair in the top left disjoint set, along with a two. <laughs> That's the only other digit. Um, is it? I mean, nine. I don't think nine is restricted. Nine has to be in one of those two, but that's okay. I mean, absolutely fine. So 
So So what does that mean in the world? It doesn't seem to do any of that. This is my problem with this. It feels so potent that there's this 7-8 pair. Like, like it should mean something to me. I'm probably missing just a naked... Probably there's a 7 or an 8 looking at this and everyone's shouting at me. Is it? I suppose, yeah. Oh, no, I've looked at the... That's how I discovered it, is looking at the disjoint sets. I'm really sorry about this. I don't I don't understand the importance of that 7 8 and I'm reluctant to leave it because it was so hard won. Um So Oh dear, dear, dear. Okay. Um, has it somehow restricted? I, I'm going around in circles in my head. I'm so sorry. That's not going to be how I think we make progress here. So we're going to have to think again. Let's look at another set. I'm going to go back to this one. That one, this one feels the most productive in the sense that I've actually got lots of digits in this one. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, Go back to this one again. Oh, actually, have I checked? No, I've got that one highlighted. I've not quite got it. I've got, I know the one is in one of those two positions. I don't think I know more than that. Okay, I am going to go back to this one again. Let's have a look at this again. So, top left of boxes. What do we know about this, if anything? Um, I feel this 7 8 is is it's doing something that I'm not understanding. So let's just think what is that? It could be affecting a row. He says starting with the absolutely obvious. I don't think it's affecting a row. Does anyone think it's affecting a row? It doesn't look like it's affecting a column. It's it's affecting its disjoint set group. That's the most profound effect it's having. It's limiting. Oh, is that what it's doing? Oh, actually, that is. Hold on, hold on. Actually, let me just highlight this. Let me just highlight this because I have actually just had a sensible thought and I'm just trying to get it clear in my head. What I've noticed is this ripple. Whatever goes on this ripple is a three, four, five or six. Now, I've not yet placed three, four, five or six in the yellow. And whatever goes in the ripple into those two squares can't appear here because obviously it will be in this cell here and because of the 7 8 doesn't this mean doesn't this mean that this has to be a 3 doesn't it mean those two squares have to be 3 because whatever these squares are, 
we have to put in the yellow somewhere. Well, we can't put them in those squares because they're going to, if, if I just make these five for the sake of exposition. Now I can't put five in those and I can't put five in these, which means five would have to go in one of those. But by Sudoku, five has to go here and five therefore couldn't go in those. So you couldn't put it in the disjoint set. And the only digit that will work is three because you don't have to put three here. Three is already there and the three here gives you the latitude to be able to put three in one of those two squares where you have to put it given it can't go in those three and can't go in those two. That is unbelievably brilliant. This person, this cat, is really, really good. So now I've got threes here and here. What does that do? The problem is that this could do any number of things. <laughs> it's so difficult to keep track of. So that three moves out of those cells. The three moves out of this cell. Ah, is that good? Oh yeah, look, come back to this diagonal again. Now I've got, now the yellow set here is one, two, four. So this is the set that adds to seven. The other set must add up to, to six, which means it must be one, two, three. So that can't be four as well. That's got to be one. That's got to be three. And that means, that means that's not three. And that's, oh, well, apparently I already knew that. I just didn't follow through with the pencil marks. That means that's not three. Um, okay. I don't know what this means. I mean, it feels like that's, that's about as good a breakthrough as we've had for a while. So threes, we've got four threes placed in the grid now. I've got so much highlighting, <laughs> colors, <laughs> pencil marks. Um, so what's this done for me? <laughs> has this done anything clever? That's the next question. What has this done? didn't seem to do that much. It gave me a three here on this diagonal. Is that what it's done? I've now got, I've got 11 on this diagonal. Oh, okay. Hang on a sec. Let me just think about that. So these three squares have got to add up to 15. So if I put a two here, does that actually break? It, oh, you can't put two in this one. You can't put two here because these two squares would have to add up to 13. Well, look at the options for this square. Three obviously doesn't work. Four, five, and six all do work if this square is seven, eight, or nine. Well, it can never be seven or nine, and it can't be eight because there's an eight down there in its disjoint set. So this is not two, and that I will be very happy to take as another digit, so that's a two. Eight is now in one of those two cells. No, it's not. Eight's not in the middle because of that eight, so we can take another digit. This is an eight. That look gives me this square is a seven. And this was part of my yellow disjoint set. So this seven, actually look, I've got to be very careful here to keep track of this. I'm not going to put this eight in. I know it's eight. Okay, I do know it's eight. I am going to put it in, but not yet. I'm just going to try and keep track of my disjoint sets first. 
Seven here. Is there a seven in any of those positions anywhere else in the grid? I don't think so. Please don't shoot me if I'm wrong. Now this, okay, so this square here becomes an eight. Now that, that locks eight into one of two places in box five. Eight can't be there. I've remembered that because of the eight over there. I'm not sure. Um, nine has become a little bit more restricted because nine can only go in those two squares up there. Oh, nine, nine in this box, look, can't go in those cells, so there's a nine in one of these two squares. Uh, which means, I'm sure it means something. Um, Okay. The other thing I should check, you know, is whether this could be a two as well, because I noticed this that there were two twos on this diagonal. Now, if this is a two, I would know it's it's even easier. If this is a two, you get the same problem. You've got to make those two squares add up to thirteen, which means this one has to be seven, eight, or nine, and this just has seven, eight, and nine. Looking at it before you even get to disjoint sets, so that's not two. This is two. which, yes, that gets me a digit here by Sudoku, that's a two. That gets me a digit there by Sudoku, that becomes a two. I think I've done all the twos. Come on, I have. Threes now, there's a three nine pair in this box by Sudoku. Um. Okay, does that matter? Three, three feels like it's the, the trickiest, or the, the digit I've got the most of. I don't know if that's true. Let's double click it, that will tell me. No, it's not actually. I've only got four. Maybe it's because I've pencil marked it a few times that I feel like I know things about threes. Now I've used this diagonal. I've used this diagonal. I've really thought very hard about this diagonal. I've tried I haven't actually looked at that diagonal. I've got double two on it at the moment. It's a relatively low total. Oh gosh, I've got a nine here. God, that's terrible. Look at this nine. So that's not nine. That means that's nine. That fixes my nine and three. Does that do anything extra? It gets rid of a three from this thingy here. Three now is quite limited in box five. Three. Gosh, we're heading up towards 50 minutes. <laughs> I've still got a lot to do by the looks of things. Um, how many threes have I got now? Lots more. So there could be a disjoint set with the threes, couldn't there? I've got, oh, hang on, yeah, let's look at the purple set. The purple set, this square can't be a three because there is a three in the bottom left of that one. See, this is why this is so difficult to keep track of. Um, I've got to remember, I need to put three in one of these two squares in the yellow set. 
Now, are either of these problematic? Don't think so. But they could well be. I could just be missing something here. So, what do I need to think about next? I've now got I've now got a one four pair actually in the yellow set. So one, two, four, seven, and eight. I need three, five, six, and nine into the rest of the yellows. That's actually something that's sensible. Three, five, six, and nine. Nine can't go in those two. Uh, can we do better than that? Three can't go in that one. Oh, or that one actually, sorry, I missed this three. I might have to get rid of some of the colouring. I think it affects how easy I find it to spot things. Um, three. So now... See, five, I don't think I've got a five in the grid. It must be nines. What are nines doing to everything? Nines are... Nines are in one of those two cells. Oh, nines. These nines. I get a nine there. Does that matter? Oh, come on. It must matter a bit. Nine is in one of those two cells. Three is very restricted in this box now. It can only be in this cell or this cell. The possible one of those might be seen by a disjoint set, maybe, please. This one, maybe. Is that is there a three in that position anywhere? I don't think there is. Okay, so... <laughs> so what is it I'm missing? <laughs> oh dear, I'm so sorry about this if you're spotting it as well. It must be very frustrating. Um, but this is not an easy puzzle. It really isn't. Um, I've never been quite as sure as anything in my life that, that, that this is a hard puzzle. Um, come on, Simon, you must be able to solve this from here. Stop being slow. Um, part of the problem is I don't really know where to look. It's, I think that's one of the things about disjoint sets is that I just find myself going around the same bit of logic I've already thought about several times before. And that's not helpful. Um, threes. I might get rid of my highlighting. I think I, when I say that, I mean the color. Can I get rid of the colors I've got in here? Because I'm finding it a bit distracting. Right. Oh, that now it feels like I'm doing a new puzzle. This is ma magnificent. Right. How's this going to affect me? It does actually really make a difference to how my eyes scan. That's so strange. Um, but can I spot anything using this? So the 50 diagonal, I've got one, four, five, six to place. That feels fine. This diagonal, I've got 15 into those squares. But neither of these squares can be a high digit. And that's interesting. If neither of those can be a high digit, and they can't, they can't be 7, 8 or 9. I suppose I could still have repeats, couldn't I? So I could have double 6 or something like that. And that would mean the other digit 
is a minimum of three. So I think, ah, but three doesn't go into either of those. So I think these have to be four, five, and six. There we go. Oh, whoopsie. Um, these have to be four, five, and six in some order. Now that I think means they must be a triple on four, five, and six, and they must all be different. Um, which is a little bit interesting. Oh, where does one go in this column? That's an interesting question. It can't go there, and it can't go here. I don't know why it can't go there. Why can't it go there? Was that disjoint? Oh, that was disjoint sets on the top left box. Good Lord. Okay, so one goes here. That means this is a one. One must be in one of those cells. One must be in one of these cells. So now I've got five on this diagonal. And this square sees seven, eight, and nine. So this has a maximum value of six. So I'm wondering whether these have to be a four, five, six triple as well. Actually, that, that's not as good logic because I think three can go into this square. So this could be a, oh no, that can't be double six because these are in the same disjoint set. So you can't put three here. So this is also four, five or six. And now these three squares have to add up to 15. So they've all got to be different. So I'm, I think we might have to start coloring in a minute. That's my, that's my feeling. Maybe wrong, but let's just, I'll just have another stare for a few seconds and see if I can spot anything else. And then we might have to start doing that. So one is in one of those squares by Sudoku. Not really looked at this diagonal either, actually, now I come to think about it. But I don't know very much about that diagonal, is the honest truth. Maybe I should just check what can go along this diagonal, because we've got... So that can be... That looks like it can be 7 and 6. That's 13, 15. That can be 8. 23. This square can be, I think, as high as 7. 30. So these have to be a minimum of 14. Which looks fine, doesn't it? Seven. Oh, look, 7 by Sudoku is in one of those two squares. Can, is, are either of these affected by disjoint set? Oh God, that one is! Look, there's a 7 there, so that's got to be a 7. Which means that's a 3. I don't believe it, sorry. I mean, I know that that seems so trivial, but it's just... Yeah, I'm disappointed I didn't spot that too. That's not 3 anymore. Oh, three has to go in that square. That's nice. So that must be a nine. Nine is in one of those two. I almost filled it in there, but I don't think we know which way it goes. Nines. I've got seven nines. Okay, so I've got these two to find. Okay, I've just got this three. That three fixes me a three up here. How many threes have I got in the grid now? Lots. Yes, I, yes, that's a three by Sudoku. That gives me a one here. That gives me a one here. That's a four now by Sudoku. That feeds through the diagonal to give me a one there. This is not one anymore. There's a one in one of these two cells. There's a one here. There's a one here. These squares have got to be four, five, and six. These two squares are five and six. Sevens. I might be able to solve this. It's not impossible. And I will be able to solve this now. I shouldn't have said that, but 
does actually look like I'm getting somewhere, doesn't it? Although I've got four, fives and sixes everywhere. Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm quite tempted to colour the four, fives and sixes, I have to say. Now, the, the question when we start colouring is which one do we pick? I'm tempted to pick this one, I think. So let's make that green, because I can see that must make this cell green immediately. Oh, bother though. We don't actually know which one of those two is green. Okay. So let's make that one blue and that one purple and see if that tells us anything. So this one by Sudoku is therefore blue, which means that one's blue, I suppose. Ah, ah, look, if that one, oh no, I did it the wrong way round. Oh no, I was about, oh no, it's, no, it still works, but it, this is, I'm not even gonna tell you what was going on in my brain there, it's so bad. I thought this one, equated to that one in disjoint sets. So I was about to say this one must be blue. But then I noticed that this one is actually the equivalent of that one by disjoint sets. So it can't be blue, so that one's blue. So it's the complete opposite to what I thought, but at least I finally figured something out. Um, so these are a blue-green pair somehow. I've got... Uh, this. Oh, this one feeds through its palindrome to there. This square sees blue and green, so that's purple. Um, okay, does that matter? It might do. Come on, Simon. I think we're... Do I think we're one deduction away? No, I'm not sure that's true, actually. We might be more than one deduction away. Six... These can't be, look, these are, these ones here are purple and they can't be four, so I should definitely get rid of the four from there. Six, blue, blue, green is in one of those two cells. Purple is in one of these two cells. And So one of these two squares is blue, but I think it can be either. I'm, I don't think we know which one it is. I might be wrong about that, but I'm not seeing how we can tell. Green has to be in one of those two squares. Are either of these seeing a disjoint set? I don't think so, but I could be wrong. Um, one of these two squares has got to be purple. And again, I don't think they're seeing anything through their disjoint sets, which is incredibly annoying. Um, maybe this isn't what we're meant to do then. Maybe I've just not, I've not appreciated something. Nines, eights, I've not done all the eights, have I? Maybe I can do more with eights. Eights have got to be in one of these two cells. Oh, Simon, come on. If I could just, I think if I could just get which of these was purple, no, sorry, which of these three was purple. Ah, God, oh, whoa, okay, here's something. It's not easy, but it's something. Purple is in one of those two cells. And per if you look at all the possible positions for purple in box eight, it's one of these three. So the purples are arranged in this arrangement. So I've not yet put purple in row eight of the grid. 
So it has to go in one of these two squares and there's a purple there. So that square is purple. Don't believe it, it does nothing, you know, it does nothing. Um, Oh, got it, got it, blue. Blue can't be that one because we started this with a blue in the middle. So this is not blue. So where does blue go in box six? It's got to go here. Yes, I have got it because now column seven has blue, purple and green in it. So these are four fives and sixes, which means that square is not, and that is a naked single, that is a seven. This square, okay, so this is four, five, or six, which gives us, ah, so we get seven by Sudoku into this box, seven by Sudoku into this box. All the sevens are probably done now, yes. This square here now has to be green because it completes its column. That means this one is blue, this one is purple. What, imagine if I got two purples or something in the same row now, I would, hang myself um this has got to be green this has got to be green um uh, so come on which how does this arrangement work then so these two here are fives and sixes Maybe I've got to use a diagonal again. Um, yeah, hang on. The 33 diagonal has two blues on it. So we've got 12 there, 19. I need those three squares to add to 14. And the options are, ah, we can remove six. Six is not in blue, because if six was in blue, this would have to be a two, and that's not possible. So we can remove, I don't think this can ever be eight because I can't make those add up to six. Ah, that gives me another digit, good. Eight, eights live down here somewhere. So now the options are, if this is, if this is double five, this has to be a four. And if this is double four, this has to be a six. Ah, ha, 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 but this has to be purple because it's the last digit and purple is five or six. So purple is six. Purple is six. <laughs> yes, which means blue is four to make these add up to 14. They do add up to 14. All blues become fours. Greens are fives. That means this is a five and that's green. Don't worry, I am absolutely intending to color these in. This square now needs to be green and therefore is not nine. That's the nine, that must be the eight. This must be the five and it's green. This is a nine by Sudoku. This has got to be purple and is therefore a six. This has got to be a four, a blue four by Sudoku. That should be an eight. I tell you, as I scan down there, my heart stops in case I've made a mistake. Couldn't that be awful? This puzzle needs to be seen. It's quite breathtakingly brilliant, but it's, you know, there's so many points in this where I know I've been slow, but I think I have finished it. And that is really something I'm proud of because that, that was not an easy puzzle. Oh. I've not finished it until I do that, and I've not finished it until I click this. Yes, I did it. Yes. <laughs> now there is, as I say, I'm so sorry about parts of that. I know it will have frustrated some of you, but anybody who, who finished that in half an hour has my deepest respect. Um, and thanks for watching and bearing with me. And Totally Normal Cat, I am renaming you for the next video. You are one vicious beastie and very clever you are too. Fantastic. Thanks for watching. Back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.